South Africa Woo Wake up South Africa You've been sleeping far too long Wake up South Africa Now come along and sing this song Wake up South Africa Hare Krishna, greeting to all of you who are joining today's Wusa Sunday morning inspiration or Sunday afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Umpa and it's my absolute pleasure to be a host today. Please kindly accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Now, today's Sunday inspiration topic is an exciting one and it is servant of the servant in philosophy and practice. And it, it will be delivered by the ever so wonderful His Holiness Chanda Mauli Swami, whose illustrious bio I will now read for you. Born in New Jersey, USA in 1947, His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami came in contact with the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in Denver, Colorado at the age of 24. In 1973, he began practicing Krishna Consciousness in New York City and shortly thereafter began serving at New Vrindavan Farm Community in West Virginia. That same year, he received initiation from His Divine uh, Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. In 1986, His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami accepted the sannyas order and began preaching in Cincinnati and Columbus, Ohio. In the early 1980s, he became involved with the ISKCON prison ministry in the USA and began visiting prisoners and holding programs in jails, along with regularly writing letters to inmates and sending them Srila Prabhupada's books. His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami is now the leader of the ISKCON prison ministry and has worked tirelessly to document the spiritual progression of the worldwide inmate community. His dedication to the welfare, growth and sustainable rehabilitation of these prisoners has culminated in a book called Holy Jail, a touching compilation of the activities of the ISKCON prison ministry known otherwise as IPM. In over 30 years of, of, of operation, the lives of hundreds of inmates have changed due to the practice of Krishna consciousness and the support received by devotees. In 1995, he began serving as the resident sannyasi in Chicago, where he was based until 2013, when he relocated to Karlovac in Croatia. At present, His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami offers spiritual guidance and around Europe, USA, and India. His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami is a disciple of ISKCON founder Acharya, His Divine Grace AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and is also an initiating spiritual master within the ISKCON movement. Maharaj, it's our absolute pleasure to have you with us here today, and we are completely looking forward to all that you have to share. However, before Maharaj progresses to give us his talk, I will now just quickly cover the house rules. Firstly, kindly turn and keep your cameras on so that we may have a very welcoming and personable session. Note that all mics will be muted and will remain so until 1445 South Africa time. So that's a 
quarter to four South African time for questions and comments. Please kindly raise your hand to be unmuted and also feel free to type your questions and comments in the chat box here on Zoom or on Facebook or even YouTube. And I will read them as we go along. Thank you so very much, everyone. Um, Maharaj, the floor is now yours. And thank you for joining us today. It's an absolute honor, privilege, and pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. My obeisances to you. Hare Krishna. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurudena Maha Ama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachari Ne Nirvishesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Sutarine Vanchakalpa Turu Vistya Viva Sindhu Vaivacha Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Rasivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Samudera Bhaktivinoda Ki Jai. So, I uh, believe um, the topic of my presentation is Servant of the Servant. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Servant okay. of the Servant in Philosophy and Practice. Okay. We have, from that point, we have what is Lord Chaitanya's clear and very direct statement in regard. Uh, in one verse, he says, I am not Brahmana. I am not Kshatriya. I am not Vaishya. I'm not Sudra. I'm not Brahmachari, Grihasta, Vanaprasta, or Sanyas. Taking the position of the living entity, he is giving us a clear understanding of what is the what is our under, actual identity. Uh, the role that we play or the activities we perform is in line with our actual identity. And then Lord Chaitanya goes on. Um, Gopi Bartor Padikamalayor Dasa Dasa. Andas. He explains that the living entity, using himself as the example, is the servant of the servant of the servant of the great personalities, or in this case, being in the mood of Gopi Baba, he says, I am the servant of the servant of the servant of the Gopis. Our understanding is that uh, this position of servant is synonymous with our success in all aspects of existence. Why? Is because it is our actual position. Jivair Surubai Krishnera Nichidas. It's understood that the living entity is the eternal servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But to actualize that in, in both in practice and in, in realization, one has to serve in different capacities. Now, the principle of servant is found everywhere in existence. Srila Prabhupada would always explain how even in the material world, this, this principle or this identity of servant goes on of course, people don't use that terminology because they have got it backwards. They think that in being whatever position they are, they are, that is a position of leadership, whether it's a father, a mother, uh, an employer, or a teacher, or even you know, in the spiritual circles, we have the gurus, temple authorities. But these are all external. And these activities or positions that we play are also are, are fortified and what we might say given 
uh, success by the principle of servant. So everyone is a servant. Ekala Isha Krishna Asabrita. It's mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita that there is only one master, and that is the Supreme Personality of God. Everyone is servant. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in his role as uh, the living entity coming to the material world, he plays the ideal position of being servant. We see even in the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just after he took his initiation in Gaya, he came back and what did he do? Being now initiated by Ishwara Puri, he took the role of serving all the devotees in a very menial way. It's explained in Chaitanya Bhagavad by Vrindavan Das Thakur, how he would take the clothes of the devotees, wash them, and then dry them and then fold them and return them to the devotees. He would also get their prasadam for them, helping to uh, us to understand how glorious it is to actually be a servant. In the material world, the whole principle of existence centers around the idea of not becoming a servant. The word servant itself seems to be a belittling, belittling position where to be a servant means to be someone who is ostracized or marginalized or can't do anything else. This is the material conception, which is upside down. Although everyone is serving still, they have this idea that one has to be in charge or master, but no one is master and there's only one master and that is understood. And so this idea of, of um, servant, is illustrated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to show that this is the most glorious position to be active in because it is our real identity. The more we perform the activities of servant, the more we actually become glorious, as Srila Prabhupada said, quoting this verse that we just quoted, servant of the servant of the servant, and Prabhupada said, 100 times removed. <laughs> which means that the more you actually uh, develop that consciousness of being come, becoming service and trying to fulfill that through your own activities, the more you're recognized by Krishna. <laughs> the more you're recognized by Krishna. Uh, the whole idea of the material conception of life is to compete with the Supreme Personality of Godhead for the position of the Supreme Personality of God. Of course, no one can compete for that position, but this is the material misconception, a material conception, which is a misconception. And that is that there are two principles that make up the uh, nature of the Supreme Personality of God. Bhoktaram, Yagya, Tapasam, Sarvaloka, Maheshram, Suhidam, Sarvadehinam, Yantramam, Shantam, Richtiti that the Supreme Lord is the proprietor and owner, controller of everything, and he is the best friend of all of the entities. But he is also Bhokta. Bhokta means enjoyer. Enjoy and what is, so he is the supreme enjoyer, and we, as living entities, are meant to be enjoyed by him. And that being enjoyed by the Supreme Lord is our success. <laughs> but the material conception of life is to be trying to become that same enjoyer and controller because in order to enjoy one has to take the position of being in control so everyone thinks the more i'm in control the more i can facilitate the, the, my own enjoyment so this is what goes on in the material world but devotees they compete at who can serve the best <laughs> who can serve the mo most because they understand that by becoming servant and acting in that way, it actually fulfills our purpose of existence. It gives happiness, it gives satisfaction, and it frees one from all the anxieties that come by way of having a material body. So this whole idea of servant is not only our identity, but our source of success in all aspects of life. Now, sometimes devotees, they say, yes, we understand we are servant, and that's nice. And so whenever I get a chance to serve, I'll serve. But that's not enough. 
one has to actively develop this mood of servant in all aspects of existence. For instance, when we're in association with devotees, we should be in the mood of trying to serve the devotees or be in the mood of looking for the opportunity to try to serve the devotees. So that makes the whole um, atmosphere uh, spiritual or wonderful. I'll give me a nice story. This is a little analogy. It's this story is was told by many great personalities. Uh, it's a, it's an analogy, but it's very nice. There's two nice stories, but one I'll tell is uh, one man he goes to heaven and he's in heaven and he's there with the with the in charge of heaven, Saint Peter. So he says, Saint Peter, what's it like? in hell. And so St. Peter says, all right, I'll show you. So he takes him to hell. And so the situation is it's dinner time and all the residents of hell are meant to take food at that particular time. So there's a big round table and everyone sits around the table and the food is in the middle of the table. And everyone is there and everyone has these very long forks to, to reach from where they're sitting to the food. And so the bell rings and that means beginning the eating process. So everyone with their long forks, they're all trying to grab the food in the middle and trying to turn it around and put it into their mouth. But because the forks are so big and everyone is sitting together, the forks are hitting with each other and the food is falling off and nobody can eat. So now he said, now you know what hell is. I said, all right, fine. Now let's go to heaven and I'll show you what heaven is like. So he's the same situation is there, big round table. Everyone is sitting, uh, food is in the middle, big forks, same, everything. And then um, the bell rings for everyone to begin eating. So what each person does is that they take their fork, grab the food, and they feed the person across the way. So everyone is feeding each other and everyone gets something to eat. And there's no clash. Everything is nice. So this is the message that when we, when we in, in the process of devotional service, it's about serving others and through that service, we grow, we find happiness, we find success because it's our nature. And some, some people might say, well, what about me? Krishna will take care of you. There's no worries, there's nothing to worry about. We make a little arrangements for our own personal needs, but if we're in, always in the mood of service, we're in, never in need of anything because Krishna takes care of his devotees. There's another nice story, which is also, it's, some, it's somewhat of a, a archetype. It is a beautiful story. It, uh, there's a monastery and they, uh, there are brothers living in the monastery. And uh, the monastery is a very popular monastery in Europe. It's flourishing, people are coming and the monastery is growing. More and more people are joining. The monastery is becoming one of the more known, reputed, popular monasteries throughout Europe. So things are going on quite well. And, but after some time, for no apparent reason, things changed. Uh, this is the influence of time, or it might be the influence of the material energy. So the, what happens is things started to go down. Less people started to visit. Finally, hardly anybody was visiting. Many of the brothers in the monastery started to leave. Gradually, things started to deteriorate in all levels. Pretty soon, there was only six brothers left in the monastery. And now they're thinking, wow, we were so uh, you know, glorious. The monastery was so successful. We had so many brothers, people were coming. Now, what has happened? Everything has changed. What did we do wrong? So they got together 
and they decided to ask the leader of the monastery, and I, I have it, please tell us uh, what is the situation? Why are we like this? What did we do wrong? The abbot, the head of the monastery said, well, actually, I don't know, but there is a rabbi and he's coming, he's traveling in the area and he's very respectable and learned rabbi. When I meet him, I'm planning to meet him. I will ask him, what is the situation? And maybe he can give us some idea. So the abbot left, he meets the rabbi, they're talking, explains the situation. And then the rabbi, after hearing everything, he starts to think, hmm, yeah. Well, I can't give you an answer, but I know one thing for sure. One of the brothers inside of your monastery is the Messiah. He is the chosen one by God. Which one? I can't say, but I know for sure one of those six brothers is the chosen one. Oh, so the abbot thanks the uh, rabbi, leaves, goes back. The brothers are eager to hear what the rabbi said. They sit around, the abbot starts to speak and What did he say? Well, he didn't give me a solution, but he did say one thing, which is interesting. He said, one of you six is the Messiah. Oh, really? The chosen one by God? Yes. Which one? He didn't say. <laughs> so now they're all thinking, well, you know, is it brother John? You know, he gets angry easy, but he's always right. Is it brother, uh, you know, Michael? Well, he sleeps a lot, but he works hard. So they start seeing all the good qualities in each other, and then they start serving each other, thinking that, you know, one of us is the, and therefore we have to serve. We don't want to make a mistake and miss out on the opportunity to serve that person who is chosen by God. So this goes on, and as it's going on, things start to change. More people come back, the, uh, the monastery opens up, it becomes flourishing again. More people come, people join, and pretty soon everything is back to normal again. So that was the message that uh, servant of the servant of the servant, or one is in the mood of servant, always this is the principle of success in all aspects of spiritual life and also in material life. There was a, uh, there is a uh, survey that was taken in the United States of America many years ago to try to find out what class of people or what section of people are the happiest type of people. So the survey was done because, you know, in the United States of America, they like to do surveys on everything. This is one of their pastimes, just to calculate statistics on all kinds of issues. So after doing this for a long time, they came up with the results. The happiest types of people are the people are the, who are the most active and they're serving others. Interesting, even from the material perspective, they, uh, they come to that conclusion that the persons who are the most happy are those who are serving others, putting their time, attention, and energy in helping others in different ways. So we understand from this principle, and it's, it's there throughout the Shastras, that the whole idea of Krishna consciousness is to develop the mood of service. Uh, in anything we do, we, we can't change our position. When Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was asked, he said he was asked, uh, how many disciples do you have? He said, actually, I have no disciples, 
all of those who have come to me, I learn from them. They are my spiritual masters. So here is a great, powerful spiritual master, and he's seeing that he learns from each and every one of the persons that come from him something that he can use in his own practice of Krishna consciousness in the role of a spiritual master. So yeah, he's not seeing himself as a guru. In that, in that particular category, he also would say, anyone who says them they are guru is guru. <laughs> guru means cow. <laughs> So to take the to to give ourselves an identity of the roles we play in either material or spiritual life takes us away from our real identity. A real identity is servant. And one who understands that and can cultivate that mood in all aspects. And servant doesn't mean just carrying out instructions or doing things. Servant means to act in such a way as to please the object that we try to serve. So one has to be very, uh, well, what's, what's the word? Thoughtful in thinking, I'm serving, but how can I serve in the best possible way? How can I serve to make a difference? Not only just to get the service done. See, sometimes we fall into that, that, uh, that mindset well, I have this service, so let me get it done. Then I can go on to the next service. But actually, if you would watch Srila Prabhupada and those that had his association, and even many other great souls, they put so much time, attention, care, and uh, even expertise in doing whatever they do, even if it's the smallest activity, because they know that everything is meant for the Supreme Personality of Godhead or for the pleasure of his devotees. So everything is done in that mood. Uh, we live in somewhat of a time where we have so many things to do. <laughs> we uh, have a lot of responsibilities and therefore a lot of times we find ourselves uh, overwhelmed with the amount of service that we have. And then we somehow or other minimize the quality of our service in order to get it done. But that shouldn't be there because it doesn't give satisfaction. When we put time, attention, and quality, or try to put quality in whatever we do, we actually find the happiness we're looking for through devotional service. And um, Krishna, although he is the supreme personality of Godhead, and he is the person who everyone is meant to serve, still, he likes to take the position of the servant in order to show that to become servant is even more glorious than to become the master. And that's why he becomes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just to take the position of the servant so he can show by example and also experience the happiness of that. Therefore, as Mahaprabhu, he taught, yes, servant is the highest position. And Mahaprabhu taught two main principles out of all the activities of devotional service. He illustrated these to be the most important of all activities. And that is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare and to become servant of the servant of the servant. In other words, to serve the Vaishnavas. And he illustrated these two things mostly in his, in his uh, uh, preaching and in his activities when he came to the material world. So we learn from the example of Mahaprabhu, what is the ideal? And so many times even Srila Prabhupada when he was uh, glorified for all the success that he had accomplished in spreading Krishna consciousness, he would say, I, I'm just trying to serve the instructions of my spiritual master, that's all. So that is my success. <laughs> that is my success. So these are some simple, but very, what we say, direct principles that we can think about 
that not only that we should understand that whatever roles we play are not really our real identity, our real identity is to serve and that an identity and success are synonymous with happiness. When we identify with who we are and act into that, we find, we, we find satisfaction and happiness through the activities we perform. We have to practice that uh, because the whole material world is geared in the opposite direction, to become the master, to become the controller, we may even, may even take the position of being in control, but being in control in the mood of service. I remember when, uh, just after the disappearance of Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj, we held a ceremony for him in Detroit, in Michigan, in the United States, as a glorification for Maharaj. Many devotees and other persons came from everywhere to glorify and to remember Maharaj. And uh, one state senator from Michigan, he also came. And he, uh, he had gotten Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj's book. Um, was, uh, was, was it? Leadership. And books on leadership. Maharaj did two books, Leadership One and Leadership Two. And in there, Maharaj very carefully and very clearly emphasizes that it's servant leadership and it's not just leadership. It's leading, it's serving from the position of leadership. Now, this state senator, he was, you know, a person in politics. He came and he read Maharaj's book and he gave a speech. And in his speech, he, he was like incredulous. He said, I have never heard of this principle before that we have to be a servant in the position that we have. He said, I'm a state senator. I have a lot of responsibilities, a lot of people under me. So I'm their leader. <laughs> so then when he was reading and hearing this conception of how whatever position you have, even if it's the you know, a big position wherever you are, you're a servant. And when you're in that mood, you actually perform your activities in the proper consciousness. You are serving your constituents or you're serving your followers. And he was so much amazed by that. And at the same time, uh, somewhat pleased to hear that. And he said, I'm going to try to adopt that mood. So that was interesting when we had this man from the secular world who simply got Maharaj's book, and after reading it, it changed his whole conception of his position and how to act in his position for the betterment of others. So this mood, this mood of servant, is the, the highest principle in anywhere in all aspects of life, and even Krishna himself, <laughs> he wants to become the servant. So study those persons that you are meant to serve or want to serve and see how you can serve them. There's one god sister of mine, she's in Denver, Colorado. She's a pujari, she's a very senior person. She's quite elderly also, she's over 70. She still does pujari work, but in her pujari work, she takes the opportunity to collect maha prasadam. And also she gathers small books and throughout the day, she'll go and meet someone and say, oh, this is for you. And she'll give them a bag of Mahaprasadam or she'll meet somebody and she'll talk about Krishna consciousness and give them a book. So she's always looking for opportunities to give Krishna consciousness to others outside of her regular service. This, she does this extra. And this has become some of a, somewhat of her trademark. She's known for doing all these little services here and there to different types of people, even people in the material world and even people, even devotees both. And she becomes very happy. You can see when she's doing it, she's in, she's in her element. She's very happy. So that's the mood. If we think, well, I have my service, that's all I'm going to do. That's it. 
then we're missing the opportunity to grow in spiritual life. Okay, so these are some points that we can think of. Uh, so when we have that understanding, just like sometimes when we give a class and the devotees are listening to the class, how are the devotees serving by listening? They're serving by listening. They're serving by trying to understand. They're serving by uh, trying to take something from what they hear and apply it to their own Krishna consciousness to improve the quality of their devotional life. So this is the move, how to become a servant. I don't know if that was okay, but that's all I can think of right now. <laughs> That was perfectly okay. Better than just okay. Thank you very much, Maharaj. We do have two questions in our chat box, both uh, from Raj Prabhu, who asks, please can you explain the true and full meaning of serving? The dictionary describes it as to perform duties for another, but the real meaning must be more, surely. For example, serving could be giving knowledge. And then he asks a second question, but I think if you could kindly answer that first one and then I'll read the second one, that would be great. What is the complete definition of, of serving? Well, in Vaishnava circles, it's to serve in a pleasing way. In other words, not just performing their duties or an activity that is, that is meant to happen, but to think of how to do it in the best possible way to make the, uh, the success of that service, in other words, make it come out nice. In other words, try to please the people you are serving. That's all. The mood of pleasing, Rupa Goswami explains that. Ayabila Sita Sunya Jnana Kamala Navritam Anukulena Krishna Silanam Bhakti Uttama and he says, one has to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead with a desire to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There are persons who serve, who please the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but don't desire to please him. And they're the demons. The demons fight with the Lord. The Lord likes to fight. He kills the demons. They get liberation. And... But they don't get bhakti because bhakti means one has to have the intention to please and at the same time perform the activity. So that's more of a complete understanding of the mood of service to have the desire to please the object that you're serving. Giving knowledge is one way to serve, giving prasadam is a way to serve, speaking some kind words when they're needed to serve. Being there when someone someone is someone is in need, that's a way to there's so many ways you can serve. Maharaj. Oh, I'm but, sorry. I would, but I would also add you have to take care of yourself too. Because what you give to others will be based on what you uh, how you are developing in your own Krishna consciousness. If you're not taking care of yourself and giving yourself whatever you need to practice Krishna consciousness properly, effectively, you don't have much to get offered to others. So it's reciprocal. We can give according to how much we have. So then we have to balance that out also. If we get sick, then people have to serve us. So we should think, I don't want to get sick because that causes people to serve me. I would rather be in the position to serve others. So let me keep good health. That's one of the reasons for keeping good health. Thank you very much, Maharaj. As I was listening to you speak, I've got a feeling you've already answered his second question, but I'm going to ask it anyway in case you have additional thoughts. He asks, what advice or instructions can you give us to help cultivate our mood of servitude and to improve the quality of our service. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to serve by preaching, read the books, <laughs> gather more understanding of what Srila Prabhupada has given to us. 
and learn how to apply it in a way in, in a way of service. So developing more knowledge. As we also grow, we have more to give. So we have to take care of ourselves also in different areas. I think that's somewhat overlapped with the first answer. <laughs> Thank you, Mara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to, uh, service is a proactive thing. It's not something that, well, I'll serve if the opportunity comes. No, we have to be looking how to serve. We have to be trying to find ways to serve. And how we have to be find, looking how to increase the quality of whatever service we're performing. All these are part of the mood of service. Thank you, Maharaj. Our next question is from Bunlolo, who says, Hare Krishna, how do we serve others starting their spiritual journey? Um, well, generally, um, in their start, we have to develop a relationship with them where we, they, they feel comfortable listening to what we have to say. In other words, we have to develop some kind of friendship. In other words, devotees are friendly and they're, they're encouraging people to come forward. We take time with people. And then once we open up a little bit of a relationship, then we can give them something. It becomes easier for them to accept whatever we say. Uh, that's why Bhakti Siddhanta used to say, that the person who takes time on the one-to-one -one basis with people is more effective than the platform speaker. So that's, that was his statement, that when one-to-one -to -one is much more effective than just simply giving a class you know, in general. That was Bhakti Siddhanta. Because you can make a difference on a one-to-one -one basis where it becomes more personal and communication is more readily coming from both sides. So that's one thing we can look at. Not that we give up, uh, you know, giving classes or doing seminars like that, but um, he, Bhakti Siddhanta wanted to illustrate when you take time with the person on a one-to-one -one basis, it's very effective in helping that person grow. Thank you, Maharaj. The next question is from Savya Sachi Prabhu, who asks, please share how we can overcome the mood of taking from devotees and not giving. Well, we should take, we should take to give. If we're taking simply to take, then that's, that's, you know, that's a little bit, you know, self absorbed. We can take but we can take to give. Prabhupada said, you know, there was one uh, uh, spiritualist. He would, someone would offer him money and he would say, no, 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 I, money, I, money, it's, it's, I can't take, I can't take. Money is material, money is money. The Prabhupada said, no, no, you bring money. You give me money, I'll take it. And you give me more, and I'll use it for Krishna. <laughs> so, yeah, we take to give, not just simply to take to keep or to enjoy ourselves. It gives us greater opportunities to give more and more. So we're not against taking. We're just against keeping it in one place. <laughs> Keep it moving on. Even when you get praise, accept the praise, but pass it on to the devotees, pass it on to the spiritual master. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, we have a comment from Bafana who says, this is a most powerful principle in our lives. I think he's referring to the principle of service. I wish it could be repeated. Well, Bafana, you can repeat the message and keep it in circulation by sharing this clip once the class is done. And then Jambavan asks a question that's on everybody's mind all the time, which is Maharaj, how do you keep so young at heart 
and jumping and dancing in kirtan. Really, what is your secret? Well, I don't know if I agree with the question. <laughs> so, uh, well, I, I don't know, to get serious and try to answer that question, it's that um, when, I, when we're in kirtan, I like to completely try to absorb myself in hearing the sound of Krishna's name. And then I find that the name itself inspires me to dance. Like that. And as far as energy is concerned, I don't know. That comes from Krishna. <laughs> it's not from <laughs> sometimes I'm not I'm not feeling like that all the time. But when the kirtan is nice and the devotees are enthusiastic and the energy is building in the kirtan, we all get kind of moved into that kirtan. So um, Sometimes I say, you know, Krishna gives something to everyone. And so he might say, he gave me a little mercy in that area. So. Jambavan, I hope you are happy with that answer and that you took some notes for yourself personally. Um, our next question is from Archana Siddhi Devi Dasi, who says, my humble obeisance is Gurudev. Sometimes there is a conflict. What if I'm unable to serve someone? or please someone, because if I think it will conflict with my more important services or duties, and if I say no, then it might offend the other person. So I guess the question is, how do you deal with that conflict of needing to or having to serve someone, but being unable to do so because of other duties? I think you just have to be open and honest and that you will explain the situation if there's some requirement that I would like to serve, but it seems like I'm not able in this particular situation. Please forgive me. I have other responsibilities. But you should try to serve. You should make that effort. But when it becomes clear that there is a conflict, you have to choose whether you're going to put your time and energy in one place or in another. Sometimes that comes up, especially with parents. Parents have to take care of their children. But they may also have other responsibilities too. Uh, for instance, I'll give you an example. There was one god sister of mine. Her name was um, what was her name? Uh, I think. I'll think of it later. I can't think of her name now. But this was back in the 1960s, and she had a little child, two-year-old child, and she was also doing pujari work in the temple. And she wrote Prabhupada a letter saying that, you know, uh, I'm doing Pujari work, I'm doing service for the temple, I'm happy, I like it, but I also have my child and I find that it's hard to keep take care of my child and do my service in the temple. So she wanted some advice from, from Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada wrote, wrote back in a very interesting way. He said, he said, Child worship is more important than deity worship. <laughs> he said, these children are sent to us by Krishna, and therefore it's our duty to give them whatever they need to grow, both in the materially and in their, their spiritual life. So Prabhupada made the point that, yeah, as a mother, your first duty is to take care of your children. And if you can do some service on top of that, that's good. But if it conflicts, then... The child, the responsibility to take care of children becomes first. That's just an example. Thank you, Maharaj. We have a question from Itu Meleng now who says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, may you please explain the difference, if there is any at all, between serving within an institution, which throughout history may be disenfranchising for some, and having a mood of service. Disenfranchising? Mm -hmm. Well, one should find their, one should find somewhere within that institution where they can serve nicely. There are many opportunities to serve. Even Srila Prabhupada could see that many times devotees were having difficulty serving in one place, in one situation, in, in association with certain you know, individuals. 
So he would move that person to a different situation and let them serve there. And then they would, they would find themselves, um, you know, growing in their spiritual life. So sometimes we have to change our environment and change our service in order to uh, develop in our Krishna consciousness. So that may, may, may be an option also. Thank you, Maharaj. That brings us to the end of the question and answer and comments section, but I do have one more. I think time permits me to squeeze it in, which is how do we keep our service ever fresh? I personally cannot imagine doing the same service for 40 years, and yet I see devotees carrying on blissfully for 40 years doing exactly the same service, and sometimes like pujaris at exactly the same time, <laughs> same time of every day, of every month, of every year, and yet they are ever blissful. How do we kick boredom wow. and keep it ever fresh? Is that your question? Yes, that is. <laughs> 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 I, I got a sense that was coming from you. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I think there's two, two possible considerations. One, although you're doing the same service, try to be creative in the service yourself. Think of, think of not new, but additional ways to do the service uh, for instance, if you're cooking and you have to cook, then start thinking how you can make different preparations or make it even nicer. In other words, not only do the service, but try to see how you can improve it, how to see how you can make it more variegated. A little bit of variety gives life to our activities. That's one way. And... Uh, when you develop love or affection for the object of your service, then it doesn't matter. You can do the same thing because it's not so much the service. It's the, uh, it's the person you're serving that it motivates you to continue the service, even though it's the same service. So we, when we're serving Krishna or even when we're serving devotees, we, we develop some affection for the devotees and affection for obviously. So that, that allows us to continue doing our service. And it, it, we don't even see it as service anymore. We see it as, as something that's very joyful, something that's very, it's, it, we look forward to it. Uh, we, lo we lost your video. Uh, we lost your audience. <laughs> I didn't realize admin muted me, but I've unmuted myself now. Um, I was just expressing our gratitude for all the jewels that you shared with us today. There was so much nectar, even in a brief space of time. At one given point, we had 50 people joining in today from both Zoom and Facebook. And that number will multiply as all of you who are here now today listening will continue to share um, this lecture. Like Maharaj said, when we get, we should give what we get. So my hope is that you will really, really share this with all of your networks. Now I'm going to move on to reading the announcements as we wrap up. Maharaj can be found on social media at Chandra Mauli Swami on Instagram, as well as at Chandra Mauli Swami on Facebook. I'm sorry, his handle on Instagram has an underscore. So that's at Chandra Mauli underscore Swami on Instagram. You can also visit his website, which is www.cmswami.com to find out about his various projects. Kindly visit, like, share, and follow Wusa social media platforms. That includes Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube with the handle at Wusa108. And please help Wusa to get to a thousand followers and subscribers on YouTube and much more than that. Thank you for your support. The morning Japa sessions are on every morning from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Standard South African time. Details around the daily program will be communicated in the WUSA WhatsApp group. And then the books are the basis book club is up and running. Join in on the association every Thursday evening South Africa time for a jam-packed reading and sharing of realizations via Zoom. 
Also, the Heart to Heart Vaishnavi Circle is happening every Friday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Standard South African time with Her Grace Mother Vraja Leela, featuring various senior Vaishnavi speakers here on Zoom. You can visit www.wusa.online to find out more. Then, please register for the CKC Cubed Kavya Khan Poetry and Creativity Workshop now, apparently. Visit www.wusa.online online on the arts and craft at house of wusa page and click on the event banner to register the creative krishna conscious content creators program is an international collaborative effort through quiddity concept magazine they are a creatives helping creatives network a preaching through empowerment initiative then you are welcome to join in on the ongoing discussions every Wednesday as shared on the WUSA website. That's wusa.online forward slash campaigns as we work towards developing ideas geared towards inclusively sustainable growth. You can also visit change.org and follow the WUSA campaign, which is titled Allow Devotees of ISKCON South Africa a Voice in Solving Existing Racial Imbalances to proper familiarize yourself with the WUSA effort which is now observing the latest developments around the reconstitution of the National Council following our initial cited discussions. And then you are invited to join the WUSA weekly WhatsApp group via the link at wusa.online to receive regular activity updates and communications. Please note though that this group is for quick announcements only and will not be used for spam. Only admins can post in the group. And lastly, visit our Sunday morning inspiration page on the WUSA website and let us know what classes, talks or discussions you may be interested in having or if you wish to hear from a particular speaker so that we may try to serve your satisfaction. So Bafana, since you made a point earlier that you'd like to hear more on this topic, I think you can visit that page on the website and submit your recommendation. I'm going to try now and paste all of the links that I've shared in the notifications in the chat box here. Um, for your interest. If only technology would allow me to do so. But in the meantime, Maraj, while I try and paste these links, do you have any closing comments or any words of wisdom that you would like to share with us finally before we end? Well, just listening to all your announcements, I'm amazed what's going on. It's just really a beautiful expression of so many devotional programs to engage people. So uh, I'm just I'm just thinking maybe maybe some of my disciples can adopt some of these ideas. <laughs> but thank you very much for your you know, expert arrangement and how nicely you hosted the whole program. I'm just so happy. We are looking thank for you. collaborators, Maharaj. So we're open for collaborations. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Maharaj, um, for the inspiration and encouragement as well. So that brings us to the end, sadly, of our session. But just before we go, please note that on the screen, there are banking details should you wish to contribute to the WUSA fundraiser. I'll just give you a second to take it all in or to grab a screenshot. Okay, so that's it from me today and from the rest of the WUSA leadership. Please do join us again next week, Sunday, for yet another inspiring session. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yo, yo, what? Check it. Uh huh. Yeah. Thought I was a boy and a warm one too for associating with books. Now that the table's been turned, Luke is the greater fool. Hare Krishna. Uh, the first time Kuko Palali did the devotees, nearly here in Pretoria Temple, Kitty Lego Matla, who meditated. Then they introduced me to Japa. I tried it, Dampala, I came back and tried it with them, it was fun, nice, so I decided to take it, then 
the day when I came back, no Nale Maharaj. Like he introduced this section in the Bible Elevate from Vanity Karma. The book was Vanity Karma. And it like like different things and the negatives like there's a time to kill a time to mourn time to be born time to die so it made sense to know like then i decided to stay with the devotees to java which is nice Hare Krishna. <laughs> South Africa Woo Wake up South Africa You've been sleeping far too long Wake up South Africa Now come along and sing this song Wake up South Africa